Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green Xenagos God of Revels deck, which is a smashy face deck featuring the 5-mana 6-5 a legendary enchantment creature god that's indestructible, only turns into a creature if our devotion to red and green is at least 7, but Xenagos himself already contributes to devotion, so it doesn't take very long. And then at the beginning of combat on our turn, another target creature we control gains haste and plus x plus x until end of turn, where x is that creature's power. So we can double a creature's power and give it haste, so Xenoghost plays very nicely alongside some larger creatures that don't already have built-in haste. So that's exactly what we're gonna try to do. The first section of this deck is dedicated to ramp. We've got a ton of 2, 3, even 4 mana ramp cards to develop our mana, get Xenagos in play, and then usually the plan is to first play Xenagos and then play our large creatures afterwards so they can attack right away and so we can dodge sorcery speed removal. Then we've got this middle section, which is kind of the miscellaneous. We've got a few removal spells, a bit of card draw, and other cards that complement our strategy nicely. And then we've got the big creature section, where we've got all the heavy hitters that you can dream of. So that's kind of a rough breakdown. For those that want a more detailed breakdown, we'll go over the ramp cards, where at one mana there's Halfling, Mystic, and Lander Elves as mana creatures. We've got turn to explore to play an extra land, as well as into the north to find an extra land, and that's why we're playing the snow-covered basics. We've got a few two mana creatures as well with Karyotid, can often make two mana if we've got a larger creature in play. Leafkin Druid, if we go wide enough, can also make two mana. Loam Speaker can turn lands into three threes potentially. Cobra's quite nice with any additional ramp cards that put additional lands in play, also very good with our fetch land. And then a Paradise Druid, a 2-1 with Hexproof as long as it's untapped, so a safe investment. Sanctum Weaver is also pretty good with Xenagos, which is an enchantment, so Weaver can then make two mana instead of one. And then Florahedron can be played as a land or a creature that makes a green. An Archomancer gives our red and green spells a one mana discount. Arcane Signet and Mindstone, two mana ramp artifacts that can immediately tap for mana, so they get to nod over other options. Also, ramp creatures in general are better than ramp artifacts in this deck, since they contribute towards our devotion and can potentially attack with the Xenagos, which can be relevant if we're doubling their power, they can actually hit pretty hard. Then at 3 mana there's Cultivate and Harrow to search up extra lands. We've got Gwenna, which can make 2 mana to cast creature spells, so it can also help cast Xenagos even if it's not a creature when it enters the battlefield, but if it is it can also help untap Gwenna and give it an extra counter. Sumberwald Sage makes 3 mana that we can use to cast creature spells. Provisioner can also make additional treasure tokens or food tokens with landfall. There's Sylvala, which can also be very exciting with a large creature in play, can also potentially draw additional cards if we're putting larger creatures in play than the opponent. And then Palladium Mirror and Power Stone, both making two colorless. We've got Goreclaw giving our spells a two mana discount if they're large enough, and potentially giving the team a plus one plus one and trample bonus as well. And then Invasion of Zendikar, as well as Vastwood Surge, can find two basic lands to put on a battlefield tapped. Then in our miscellaneous category, we've got some one-mana removal with Lightning Bolt and Blizzard Brawl, another reason to run those snow-covered basics. Combat Celebrant can help us attack a second time, which is pretty exciting with Xenagos, as we get to trigger Xenagos as well for a second time. Reclamation Sage to blow up artifacts or enchantments. Domri helps us fight while pumping the team, can also help us ramp. And then Bloodbraid can cascade into one of our many ramp cards, usually. Got the Partners as another way of giving creatures haste, can also give additional plus one counters. Doors of Durin is a fun one if we can attack, can potentially cheat another creature into play, tapped and attacking. A Luka can help us ramp, can also be used as removal or make 3 3 beasts. We've got Ember Cleave, which is another great way to end the game, especially after doubling a creature's power with Xenagos. This can just double strike and trample for the win. A Rishkar's Expertise is especially powerful if we cast it second main phase after pumping a creature with Xenagos, can draw 10 plus cards pretty easily, and then still cheat something else into play. Tooth and Nail, a recent addition, very powerful if we can entwine it, search up two creatures and put them both onto the battlefield, can often also win us the game on the spot, even though we don't have Crater Hoof Behemoth, which is typically the card you would search up. And the Great Henge we can also play for pretty cheap, and can also draw us additional cards and gain some life. And then we get to the big creature category, starting with Ilharg, which can cheat additional creatures into play, tapped and attacking. 
Terror of the Peaks rewards us for playing additional creatures as it can damage the opponent equal to their power. Also just a nice flyer to potentially double with Xenagos and get in for 10. There's Elder Gergroth as a 6-6 Trampler with Vigilance and Reach. Can draw additional cards, make 3-3 beasts or gain 3 when it attacks or blocks. There's Thrun, which is pretty difficult for a lot of decks to interact with, so a pretty safe investment to double with Xenagos, get in for 10, and also indestructible during our turn. We've got a Vorinclex as a 6-6 Trampler with Reach that can find two basics when it enters, can also potentially transform it. And then the Crasher, another great payoff, as it can often hit the opponent and leave a huge token behind, also with Trample. We've got the Ancient Copper Dragon, if it hits the opponent we get to make a lot of treasure. Itali can cast cards for free if it attacks. Morag is similar to the Combat Celebrant, lets us take additional attack steps, just make sure to play the land second main phase so you actually get to untap your creatures. Primeval Titan, of course, a staple of any green brawl deck, and no exception here, can help us ramp when it enters or attacks. And then a Kogla can fight an opposing creature when it enters, destroy artifacts or enchantment when it attacks, so it can make that happen right away if we played out with a Xenagos in play. And then Kogla and Hidaro can also fight an opposing creature, or we can have it enter with Trample and Haste. Even though Xenagos already grants Haste, it's still nice to potentially gain Trample, so we can get past any chump blockers. And then at 7 mana, there's Balefire Dragon, one of the more exciting ones if it hits the opponent, as we get to deal damage to all the opponent's creatures, equal to the damage dealt by Balefire Dragon, so we can wipe the opponent's board for 12, potentially. There's Itali Primal Conqueror to play something for free when it enters. Can also transform into a huge indestructible trampling poison creature essentially. And Dracoseth, a 7-7 flyer that can decimate the opponent's board when it attacks. Alt Nawbone can make a lot of treasure if it hits the opponent, can potentially make 14 treasure if we target it with the Xenagos, and then we can easily empty the rest of our hand. Thorn Mammoth can repeatedly fight opposing creatures. There's Zopondrail, doubling power and toughness of our creatures each turn, also very nice alongside Xenagos. And then a Titan of Industry, another large Trampler that can gain life, deal with artifacts or enchantments, make a Rhino token, or give us a shield counter. And last but not least, Galta, Primal Hunger, 12-12 Trampler, perfect creature to target with Xenagos, so we can get in for 24 power of Trample and Haste. And then our mana base, just lots of red-green dual lands, and then a few utility lands. Castle Garenbrig, pretty important at helping us ramp out our green creatures ahead of schedule. There's Boseju and the Crucible that can be channeled. And then the Bonders Enclave is also a fun one to get with Primeval Titan to draw additional cards. Can also get a temple to scry sometimes. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kethys, the Hidden Hand, and our hand is not the worst. Could use something to play before Galta to go with Xenagos, since Galta doesn't get the discount from Xenagos unless it's a creature. But uh, can't really mulligan this hand either, and Vorinclex will be a nice follow-up to the Somberwald Sage. Bowen's got the Goose. And Signet's I think we're still into the north, since Signet can at least tap for mana the turn we play it. So we can play it alongside Somberwald Sage. It's gonna be a Glissa, can destroy enchantments, but Xenagos is indestructible. I think I prefer playing Sage over Sylvala. Even though Sylvala could draw four Inklex, it would also maybe draw when the opponent plays a larger creature. Alright, Infernal Grasp kills Sage anyways. Can play Vorinclex and then Blizzard Brawl, which would make Vorinclex indestructible, so it can take out Glissa. Yeah, I think I like that over Gergroth, so we can actually hit our land drop. It's been a while since FK has a Blizzard Brawl, but still a good card. So we might see Kethys now, unless her opponent can ramp into some other 6-drop Relic of Legends. And the Raidan. Okay, not a problem since we're mostly casting expensive creatures as opposed to non-creatures. So we could already play Xenagos. I guess Snowlands enter tap because of Redan. That's the one downside of playing the Snowland mana base. 
We can uh, play Xenagos, double Vorinclex's power, that's pretty strong. Or we can play Gergroth. And then set up a cheap Galta alongside Xenagos to maybe just kill the opponent on the spot. Kind of like that idea as well. If it weren't for Vedan, we could have double spelled here. Still played Galta after playing Gergroth. So our opponent's got some beefy creatures that they need to deal with. And how about a Meat Hook Massacre for six? Yeah, I guess that's one solution, but also wipes their own board. And Rishkar's expertise is going to be more exciting once we have an actual creature in play. Maybe we do just play Xenagos and Leafkin and then hope that uh, we can play Galta next turn. Our Devotion is three, we need seven, so... With Selvala, we're still too short. Bajuga Bog exiles our graveyard. And Old Gnawbone, that's a good one. So play Old Gnawbone, and then we can hit the opponents for 14. And then cast a huge Rishkar's Expertise. And that was quite the top deck. So no need to play Galta first, since Gnawbone has more power anyways. Could have maybe played Sylvala as well, but unlikely to exceed 14 power. And how about a free Domri, and then fight one of the opponent's creatures. But yeah, opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is probably too slow, as much as I want to keep a hand with Doors of Durin to see it in action. Sage can enable it, but if our opponent doesn't play a ramp artifact, things are not great, and we're also missing a 1 or 2 mana accelerant, which we really need here. So we'll take a mulligan. This is better. So turn 2 Leafkin, maybe sets up turn 3 Invasion of Zendikar. Now we can play Paradise Druid, which is a bit safer. Turn to Stowaway to help them loot. Now a Mindstone. They left themselves with only colorless mana, which was maybe not the plan. Unless there's another two mana artifact here. So Invasion's gonna resolve. And then can maybe get Xenagos in play. Invasion does count for one Devotion as well for Xenagos, so that's relevant. Field of Ruin doesn't have any non-basics to target at the moment. So opponent's one turn away from casting Moldrotha. And a Bowmaster's pretty decent answer to Paradise Druid here. That's a setback. Can also punish us for casting Explore. So do we still want to play Xenagos? If I draw a land, then I'm still guaranteed Mammoth on the following turn, so then it could be okay. If not, we might take a different approach. Opponent discarding a Journey to Eternity. Did pick up the land. Opponent still has blue mana up, which could represent Wash Away. I think going for Xenagos now is reasonable. That resolves. And then next turn Thorn Mammoth can come down, maybe fight an opposing creature and still get in there. Don't really want to find Moldrotha since that would be a trade. But can take out Stowaway or Bowmasters. Ooh, Zopondrail. That might be even better here. 
Or is it... Nah, I guess Mammoth first still makes more sense, so we get to fight again next turn. Potentially. Take out the stowaway. And then Mammoth can attack the opponent directly, or transform Invasion of Zendikar. What's better? Next turn I can place a Pondriel regardless. So I think going face is fine. So yeah, hope to keep Thorn Mammoth alive, but I'm not counting on it. So, 7 mana total. There is a Chupacabra, I guess, in the graveyard, which I hadn't seen, so that's an easy answer to Thorn Mammoth. Although now they didn't leave themselves with enough black mana. So... It's going to be Cryptolith, right? And now they can still play Chupacabra. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of tough. Chupacabra coming back from the graveyard over and over is not something we can easily beat. Unless we just top deck a huge Trampler to kill them on the spot, which we did not. As a Pondrail just gets chummed by Chupacabra, don't have enough creatures in play to make it indestructible. So, yeah, we're in a bit of trouble. Might have to explore and find something useful. A Blizzard Brawl? That sort of counts. So I can play Silvala and Leafkin. Don't think there's anything I want to fight right now, but next turn we might go for it. And if I let them jump with a the Chupacabra, they can just get it back. So let's just pass. So yeah, big Trampler is kind of what we need here. Play Crafter. They can also replay, so... They can keep clearing my creatures. So it's not looking good. Yeah, big Flying Dragon is what we need here. And Myers Grasp kills Silvala. And then they can still replay a creature from the graveyard. Stowaway or Halfling. We're also under a pretty fast clock. So might only have one more draw step here before the game's over. They did leave themselves pretty vulnerable by only keeping Stowaway back on defense. So now I can actually play Zapondriel and Blizzard Brawl. And I think that kills them, since we'll double power. And then double again. Yeah, that was pretty lucky. So it doesn't matter in which order we trigger them. That's 20 power out of nowhere. Sweet. Odin's in shock. They can't believe what just happened, and uh, yeah, can't blame them. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tovalar, Dire Overlord, Red Green Werewolves. Our hand's pretty decent. Bolt for early interaction into Druid, Power Stone. Might be a bit short on red mana for Dracoseth, but uh, once we get it down, it's gonna decimate the opponent's board. As it should. Henge is still gonna take a while. But next turn I can play Power Stone and keep a Bolt at least. And then likely taking out Tovalar. Liberator we don't love to see since that can take out Power Stone. So now I'm probably forced to just take out Liberator right away. And leave them with Tovalar potentially next turn, but that's okay. We did find another red source, so we're getting closer to casting Dracoseth. With another red source we'll get there. And red green's gonna struggle to deal with a 7-7, unless they've got some effects to destroy flying creatures, but that would be surprising. There's Tovalar. No Dracoseth, unfortunately. So, yeah, just have to go for Xenagos. Which doesn't do a whole lot at the moment. 
but Dracoseth could come down as a 14 powered flyer. Any creature we can cast likely sets up our Great Henge. Tovalar could find Leafkin. Don't really need it anymore, but now Tovalar also gets to draw. Come on, red mana. Untapped red mana. Nope. A Lotus Cobra would have been good enough if we still had a Leafkin, I believe. Now I can play Cobra. Can still finish off Domri with it, so that's nice. And then if I play my land second main, should also have enough to play Great Henge. So still a pretty good turn. Although I was forced to use my Landfall trigger, which could have made the triple run for Dracoseth. Mayor of Averbrook is a classic. Pumps humans and afterwards werewolves. Tovalar hits us for four and draws. So now any land will do it if we get to keep Lotus Cobra. Opponent seems to have an answer for Great Henge, Crows and Grip. Can still activate mana abilities in response despite split seconds, so I get to gain two. That's fine. Can we draw a land, please? We can. Say hello to my little friend. And smash. Oops, indeed. So four, three, three is enough since Mayor dies and then Tovalar dies. Get in for 16. And we're just one devotion away from enabling Xenagos, which could have dealt a finishing blow. Can our opponent deal with Dracoseth? If they can, we still have a game. Six mana for a caretaker. That's not going to be good enough. GG's. Double Dracoseth and swing in for lethal. On to the next one. Okay, it's time for a true test. Can we beat Atraxa Grand Unifier? Our hands, good, not great. Cobra may die and then our hands becomes a lot slower, but I think we still tried. Palladium Mirror gives us a decent follow-up if Cobra dies. Arcane Signet. And there's still one man interaction, Mystic. Okay, give Cobra a try. Don't have a third snow land for Blizzard Brawl yet, so don't have that indestructible. Kinon lets Mystic make two mana. And Arcane Signet as well, Settle the Wild, so opponents are ramping in a very impressive manner here. But no answer for Cobra at least. So, let us play this on red, since we'll have Vorinclex for green later. Although, can always get more colors sorted with Invasion. One of each. Make two mana, and then now I can Blizzard Brawl and have Cobra survive. And we get to attack our invasion to transform it right away. That's also land entering, triggering, landfall, although it's going to trigger kind of in the end of combat phase before I can actually uh, make use of the mana in my main phase. So a bit of floating mana going to waste here, but that's all right. Still had a very nice turn. And we're ready to deploy Xenagos. Key to the Archive could get all sorts of powerful cards. Opponent discarding a Leveler, which can still be unearthed. And Fateful Absence or Cobra. That's alright. Rishkar's Expertise. Can put in Vorinclex. Don't hate that. Alternative is Xenagos, and then set up for maybe Vorinclex or Dracoseth next turn. 
but this seems a bit safer while the coast is clear. Draw four, put in Vorinclex. And have to discard to hand size even. Don't think we're playing Mir anymore. Morog plus a land for an extra attack step could be fun. But likely to see Atraxa here. And yeah, it doesn't die to a fight from Thorn Mammoth. Doesn't die to Dracoseth. I guess it can trade. I guess last turn I could have attacked with a Skyclave first. Our opponent's thinking long and hard about what to do. And does go for the Unearth on Cityscape Leveler. Destroy Vorinclex. Okay. Can use the Power Stone to maybe sack a Clue Token. At the very least. Kogla and Yidaro. I'll save Morag for next turn. So if we go for Xenagos, I guess we can use the Power Stone for abilities, so that also includes Kogla and Yidaro. So yeah, Xenagos, double Skyclave, and then still use the ability here. That sounds good. And get to draw, and now we've got Xenagos in play ready to give something haste. And there's Atraxa. Finds lots of powerful cards. Binding has their enchantments. Kaya can also exile creatures, including potentially Xenagos if it turns into an active god. But at least they're tapped out for now. So we can do whatever we want including Morog, play a land second main to get a second attack step. And then we can target Awakened Skyclave, force the opponent to trade, play a land, and then still double Morog's power. I think that's still the best option available here. So I want to wait until second main to play a land. So trigger this attack. Opponent's gonna trade. And then we could crack a clue here if we'd like. Opponent does gain seven. So they're not gonna be straight up dead. we get to play a Mind Stone and trigger Xenagos and get in for 13. Okay, so Trunks is gone, points at 8 and we still have a very powerful hand. Binding deals with Morog. Opponent kept Brainstorm as opposed to Make Disappear. And it's going to be an Oracle, so yeah, opponent seems very dead now. Hasty Dracoseth should do it. Unless they have a Pact of Negation in hand, which they don't. Okay. So yeah, we managed to beat Atraxa, one of the most feared decks in the format. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Omnath, Locus of Rage, so a red green Xenagos versus a red green ramp. We've got a keeper, can explore, plus Lightning Bolt on turn two, play Worn Power Stone after. And then Celebrant could be fun alongside Xenagos. Alright, Halfling. I cannot quite bolt on turn one, but we can take it out next turn. And then Terror of the Peak is also going to be pretty good. Turn two Regrowth. Finds two lanes. 
pretty good alongside landfall cards, getting two landfall triggers at once. Uh, land is good. Take out Halfling. And next turn, Warren Power Stone, likely the play. Could see another Ram spell here. Nope, it's gonna be Ren. Can get back a land or a Spring Bloom Druid. Goes for Druid. Hope there's no artifact removal, because I'm playing Power Stone. And between Terror and Gergroth, we've got some nice options to choose from. Spring Bloom helps him ramp. So next turn we could see Omnath, which is a 5-5, five five, making additional 5-5s, five and if it dies, deals 3 damage. Would not mind finding another untapped land so we can add Sanctum Weaver to the board, keep developing our mana. And there it is. Okay, so... Could play Xenagos, play Sanctum Weaver. And we're pretty far from having enough devotion where Xenagos can enter the battlefield as a creature, which would maybe help in uh, triggering Terror of the Peaks, but I think this is going to work out better. So with a land, I could cast both five drops next turn, assuming Weaver and Power Stone survive. And there's Omnath, but without a land to enable a landfall right away. So I don't hate my position. Both decks are functioning kind of according to plan here. Please, buy us Can block time. the Druid. And a Rishkar's Expertise. Not quite as amazing as I would like it to be right now. So what's next? I guess we could play Gergroth. And then still play Combat Celebrants at the very least, but we might hit a land. And then uh can play Terror of the Peaks. Alright, there's a land. Push Seiju, I don't think we're gonna channel. And then by playing Terror, we also enable Xenagos. So that turns into a good blocker. Everywhere. And then next turn Expertise could be awesome, especially if we wait until second main phase to double a creature's power. Celebrant take an extra attack step could also be the play. And Great Henge is a good start. Could see Scape Shift for all we know, sack all lands, make a ton of elementals, but nope. Opponent scoops it up, Terror plus Gergroth is going to be too much. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Witch King of Angmar. So it can be pretty effective against a single large creature hitting them, since we'll be forced to sacrifice it. That being said, our hand seems keepable enough. Turn to Signet's. Helps us deploy an Archimancer. Or we can play an Archimancer first. Seems like they've got a removal for it. Still turn 3 Signet, turn 4 Xenagos. And then with Castle we could be in business, although check for traps now, taking Signet will slow us down. So yeah, 2 efficient uh, answers here to start out, not what we wanted to see. I guess we can return the favor with Kogla, destroying the gateway and drawing a card. Or we can play Mindstone to set up Xenagos, which is probably still better. Dreams of Steel and Oil, the discard continues. Likely to take Kogla here, I would say. And at least Xenagos they can't remove. Unless it turns into a creature. And then now Thrun's gonna be a great threat. 
although still runs into some problems with the Witch King making us sacrifice it. Can at least be a safe investment to help deploy Galta. Demolition fields, pretty good at dealing with Castle, which could have maybe set up an early Thorn Mammoth. So opponents got a lot of effective disruption early on, but they're also not really threatening us in any other way. Alright, nice cool was to be expected. Can still attack into it with Thrun, which your opponent didn't know about. And then next turn Galta could potentially just end the game. We'll need to draw an untapped land for that to work. Ooh, Shielder's Edict, the perfect answer to Thrun. Opponent's got all the answers here. Okay, so the game goes on. Need a land for Thorn Mammoth. Foreign Clex, great draw here. So can play it, get in for 12, and set up my Galta and Thorn Mammoth for next turn. And our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a blue-red spells deck. Our hand is missing some early acceleration. Well, Mulligan, this is better. Can play a tapped Glade on one. Although now with two basics, let's lead with Copper Line. So we can prioritize playing these snow covered lands for Blizzard Brawl. Cobra's nice. Although maybe still lead with Loam Speaker, so that eats a removal spell. And I can enable Cobra the same turn I play it. Gonna be a Vatric. Happy to Blizzard Brawl there. So let's say we go Cobra, play land. I have three mana left, so I could play Mir. Although I should probably take out Vatric. So in that case, we can just uh, play Mir and fight. And then still potentially on tap with a ton of mana. Ancient Copper Dragon can make more mana, so I wouldn't mind another Curve Topper. Opponent taps out for the Archmage. Foreign Clex is nice. So if we play Xenagos, can play Cobra first. And then next turn, Hasty Copper Dragon. Get in for four. Can also start using the Loam Speaker. C double copies the Archmage, so they can draw a lot of cards now. But uh, can they survive is the question. Play our Ancient Copper Dragon. And double its power and toughness. Can attack with all these. And see what we roll. A mere four. Still enough to play Vorinclex, so I'll take it. And that's enough for a concession. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, missing a one or two mana accelerant, so this feels a bit slow. This has a bit of acceleration, although one land could be sketchy. I think I still try it. If Elf survives, we get to play Sanctum Weaver, and likely to draw more lands. Opponent playing with Soul of Windgrace, so you can expect him to have some fetch lands and other ways to put lands in the graveyard. So they could already play it next turn. Although then it's unlikely to get any immediate value. For now, play Weaver. And next turn I could already play my commander if I'd like. 
Although I might just ramp into a tally. Opponent's got some land destruction, creeping mold, yep. Yeah, the uh, Windgrace decks like to have some land destruction so they can uh, get immediate value off Soul of Windgrace, but luckily we can try to ramp and still have enough mana going. Ilharg also pretty fun with Itali, which we can put in play and trigger. Witherbloom Command takes out Mystic. Okay, so we still have five mana, which is enough for Ilharg. Could also play Xenagos, hope Sanctum Weaver and my lands remain untouched. And then I can play Hasty Ilharg. Now with a land that feels more realistic, so let's just uh, try that. Xenagos and then next turn Ilharg. Put in Itali. Meteor Golem can blow up Sanctum Weaver, so glad we didn't go for Ilharg. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a pretty sweet turn. Could also go for Crasher, but I think Itali's more fun. Although Crasher would give us a huge token afterwards, so both are decent. Itali finds World Breaker and Palladium Mirror, so we get to return the favor here with World Breaker and blow up one of the opponent's lands, since we're casting it, I guess, yeah, for free. So they didn't want a taste of their own medicine, and they scooped it up. Okay, we're on the play, facing Frodo, Sauron's Bane, so the black-white alternate win condition deck. Our hand's pretty decent, a bit light on ramp, actually, but uh, I'm gonna try it. One mana answer for Frodo, turn to explore. Can still keep a bolt afterwards. And then hope to find another ramp spell. No turn one Frodo, it's gonna be Duress. Probably has to take Lightning Bolt. But then we can still explore. Nope, takes the explore. So they don't want us to ramp, guess we get to ramp anyway. But now they can try and play around Lightning Bolt. And there's Frodo. Don't have to kill it now, since I can wait for them to level up. And then respond. But if we draw 4-drop, I might regret it. Alright, Mystic works. So I likely want to bolt before the end of the opponent's turn. So next turn I can tap out for Xenagos and then maybe curve into Kogla and Yidaro. Can just take one if they attack, they don't. So they can level up once up to a 2-3, that's not enough for it to survive. I guess I don't really care if they level it up. I can just wait. Vorinclex is great. Can hit my land drops with it, and then next turn maybe fight Frodo with Kogla. Might be better than deploying Xenagos, especially if they kill the Mystic. I might be unable to play a 5 drop next turn. So I imagine our opponent's got some removal up, but could just be leveling up Frodo or keeping up protection for it. Alright, it's gonna be a soul partition, can still replay for Inclex later. And that's cool. Put on Temps the Ring. Can still bolt it potentially. Although it seems like a decent window for Kogla and Yidaro, although their opponent doesn't know about it, so they might have some protection spell at the ready. Can still bolt in response. Opponent had a Loran's escape. Let's just bolt. Not too worried about the Nazgul, even though it can technically trade for Kogla. That's no longer the case once we put an Ember Cleave on it. Desperate rescue, so that's why they had left Frodo in the graveyard to ring up to level two. Okay, that's pretty scary. Opponent can play Frodo and level it up. And then they're pretty close to just winning the game. Black Breath kills my Elf, ring up to level 3. Yeah. So opponent can level up Frodo twice next turn and win the game with it. 
So I need to play a tally and hope to draw a removal spell since Ember Cleave's not going to be enough. Yeah, that took a turn for the worse. But there's still hope if a tally finds removal. We can be in the game. Cultivate and touch the Spirit Realm, that does it. So we can touch Frodo. And that's enough for a concession. All right, Itali saves the day. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing the Exquisite Blade. So a deck that wants to cast two spells per turn. Our hand's not bad. And our commands are not the best combo with Palladium Mirror, but they're both good ramp cards to get Gergroth and Xenagos going. Opponent scries with Temple. And Blizzard Brawl, a reason to prioritize running out our forests and mountains. So turn three, play Mirror, get in for two. And next turn we could already play Xenagos. Gonna be a monk class. And then their second spell gets a one mana discount. Curse of Silence, naming Xenagos, presumably. But we can actually still pay for it. So I think I'm still going for Xenagos before Gargroth, so we can hit him with a hasty beast here. Bloodbraid's also tempting. But uh nah, I'll stick to the plan. If I could cast both Bloodbraid and Gergroth, it might have been worth it, but well, let's just go for Xenagos. And then next turn I'll probably have enough Devotion to enable it, so that can attack for 6 as well. And for now, hit him for 4. Hope they tap out for their commander here, but doubt it. It's going to be Forbidding Spirits, so that's going to require us to pay two mana to attack. So, might still play Gergroth and double its power. And then we can pay for it, still play Blizzard Brawl, although I guess we don't have enough green for that. Um, yeah, Gergroth attack and draw still seems good. And Ilharg, we can run out next turn. Boone's gonna double chump just to save a bit of damage here. Could see a sweeper next turn, in which case we can follow up with a uh, hasty Ilharg and still kill them, so that's fine. Vanquish the horde, opponent's tapped out. And play the pig for the win. Not as satisfying as Bloodbraid Elf getting to Cascade here, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Yarok the Desecrated, can double ETB effects. Our hands could use an extra land or two to enable landfall for Provisioner and Cobra, but I'm gonna try it. Turn 1 Elves is going to give us a pretty explosive start. Opponent might have a Pact of Negation in hand since they paused. So good to know about. We'll play Cobra into a land. Doesn't really do much, so I guess just play a Provisioner. And then next turn I can go Cobra, land, and maybe still Rex Age. Opponent's got their own Cobra. An Archimancer is interesting. Could also just make a treasure play Xenagos. That seems better. Although I will need an extra land to guarantee Crasher next turn. I think that's still the highest upside. Get to trigger on Provisioner, get in there. So 
suppose I could have gone on Archimancer, one mana Cobra, play a land. Still would have been short of casting Xenagos, but pretty close. Opponents go to Solemn. Cobra attacks. And Bloodbraid to draw. Okay, so we can't trigger Landfall unless Bloodbraid cascades into a ramp spell. Could Rex Sage the Solemn. But I think I just Bloodbraid and roll the dice. And Harrow was pretty excellent here. Don't think we'll need Enclave this game. Get one of each. Make two treasures. And then a little bit short of casting Crasher, but I can on Archimancer to set up for next turn, and this will also wake up Xenagos. And double, I guess, um, on Archimancer is fine, or maybe Provisioner so it doesn't trade. Opponents likely trading for whatever they get a chance to. At this point I don't care about Provisioner too much, so maybe just an Archimancer, turn the team sideways. Opponents jumping Xenagos. Alright. So yeah, we've got Crasher to follow up, although we do suspect a Pact of Negation in hand. There's Yarok. So we can force them to play the Pact. Play Crasher, so that will get countered here. But then our opponent's gonna have to pay for Pact next turn, so they won't be able to do much else. I don't think an all-out attack is necessarily worth it. Although, let's double-check the math. Let's say I target Cobra, attack all-out. Cobra chumps Xenagos. Yarok eats Cobra. Opponent takes 5. Plus another 4 is 9, but they also gain 3. Yeah, at that point, I guess, just target Bloodbraid Elf. And then attack Xenagos Bloodbraid. And then our opponent will still have to chump with Cobra at the very least. Next turn pay for Pact. And then we get to untap and likely kill them. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Obnixilus, Captive Kingpin. And our hand's not bad. If Mystic survives, turn to Domery. If not, we can still into the north. Could use kind of a 5 or 6 mana creature to ramp into. That can then also discount Galta. Otherwise, we'll just play Xenagos first. But unlikely to have 7 Devotion to turn it into a creature and give Galta a discount. But uh, turn 2 Domri is not bad. For now, plus, and we did pick up Thrun, so that's perfect for next turn. Opponent has an answer for Mystic. Nope, just a Curse of Leeches. That's okay. Domri adds mana. Could also play Xenagos first. Which is less likely to be removed than Thrun, even though Thrun is also pretty difficult for them to interact with. And then it would discount Galta. Yeah, I guess we'll go for Thrun. Can also help me fight Obnixilus next turn if needed, and still play Galta. So if our opponent does have an Edict effect to answer Thrun, they still need to deal with the Mystic first. So it's not going to be easy. Smashing kills Elf and damages Domri. That's acceptable. So let's see here. Galta costs 6 mana, so I'm 1 off casting it with Domri's help. But we can play Xenagos. And then I guess if our opponent has an Edict, we could still be in trouble, but... Not much else I can do here. And our opponent has seen enough. Thrun gets in for 12. 
that's going to be a pretty fast clock and next turn if they don't answer Thrun, Galta is certainly going to end the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play facing Atraxa, Praetor's Voice, another one of the scary decks in the format for sure. We managed to beat 7 mana Atraxa, can we do the same for the 4 mana version? Our hand is good, not great. No 1 mana accelerants. Florahedron may die, and Lightning Bolt may not have a ton of early targets. But uh, yeah, we'll give turn 2 Florahedron a shot. Even though I may end up short on landfall triggers for a provisioner. Skull Dweller on one. Alright, so our opponent wants to proliferate poison, perhaps. Still gonna play Florahedron. And then next turn I could provisioner, play land, and still lightning bolt. So taking the first point of poison is definitely relevant if our opponent can proliferate a couple more times. For now an apparition can also proliferate that poison. But let's play Provisioner, and then could also Fabled Passage make two treasures, but next turn it's going to be better once untapped. Make a treasure, and then probably best to bolt the Apparition over Skull Dweller at this stage, since Apparition can proliferate more than just Poison. So we'll bolt, and take the Poison. A singleton deck is not going to have that critical mass of uh, poison cards or proliferate cards the same way as uh, a standard deck. Inquisition does find the targets in Celebrant and a duelist, so yeah, one is going pretty hard on poison here. That's an interesting take on an Atraxa deck. So Fabled Passage, make treasure, fetch, make a treasure, lots us deploy the Great Henge. Question is if we want to play Xenagos first, but if we play Henge and then have enough devotion for Xenagos when it enters, it could draw us a card, which is probably what we need right now. And then I might finally trade Provisioner for Duelists, because the poison ends up quickly there. We've gotten our value. Opponent still needs green mana for Atraxa. And they found it. Alright, so that proliferates poison up to four. Still need a creature to go with Xenagos and Henge. Make sure to gain two. And Domri. Alright, so Domri plus Xenagos gets us to seven Devotion. So that's what we need. And then we can fight using Domri's ability. And I guess I'll save my treasure tap Florahedron. Close call. I guess keeping a blocker back for Skull Dweller is more relevant. So that enters, hench triggers, find a land. But more importantly, fight. Could just leave Xenagos back as a blocker for Domri, I suppose. Because if our opponent kills Florahedron, then Xenagos goes away. Alright, still need another large creature to really get going. But for now, Atrax has been dealt with. Invasion for ramp. So next turn they can replay Atraxa. But we can block Skull Dweller for now. So any creature would be a great draw here, like a Galta. <laughs> That's certainly at the top of the list. Finds a Blood Braid. Let's activate Domri before we forget. Cascades into a Halfling, also draws with a Henge. That was an awesome top deck. Alright, trigger, target Galta. Turn the team sideways, and that's game. Alright, so we managed to beat both Atraxas, which is definitely an achievement, since those decks can be incredibly tough to deal with. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tesseret, Blue-Black Artifact. Our hand has uh, 
no large creatures, which we kind of need here. But I do like a bit of interaction, and then two ramp cards that the opponent cannot easily remove. So I'll give it a shot. Keep a bolt. And then we can still bolt after casting Harrow. Itali is not bad. So that gives us something to ramp towards. Signet on two. Can now cultivate instead of Harrow. Unlikely to need to keep a bolt, so I think that's fine. Ensures a land drop for next turn as well. Could play Xenagos, especially if we draw lands to set up a tally on the following turn. Cloud Key, Discounting Artifacts. Okay, so yeah, now we can go for Xenagos, hope there's no wash away. And then next turn, jam Itali. Playing Silvala before Itali could draw me a card and make more mana, but might as well cut to the chase. Celestus. So four mana, five for artifacts. And a Padim, so our opponent is tapped out. And seems like a good time to play Itali. Get in for 12. And we hit a Foundry Inspector. So not the best hits all around, but still get in for 12 as well. And next turn we've got a couple options. Hopefully Itali survives. But could also double attack steps with the Comot Celebrants. It's going to be a Relic of Legends, which uh, essentially paid for itself, and a Nettle Cyst. 5-5. Five, five. The token itself doesn't have Hexproof from Padim, since it's just a creature, but can't take it out with a Lightning Bolt. Can maybe finish off the Germ token after attacking into it with Foundry Inspector. Opponents taps out for Tasha. Can shrink down our creatures when they attack. Still potentially beatable here. And a Blizzard Brawl, so that can clear a blocker. So let's say we play a Celebrant. We can double its power. I guess we can Harrow first as well here. And that will keep up Blizzard Brawl and Bolt. So we'll Blizzard Brawl now. So I guess we'll fight with Itali. They could also have a Bounce spell, but I want to be able to clear the 5-5 five five as opposed to the 1-4. And fighting with Celebrant would be bad in case of Cutdown. That works. And then Xenagos targets Celebrant. So it doesn't die to Tasha. And exert. I'll go face and get to trigger a tally twice here. Although I guess our opponent also gets to trigger Tasha twice. A tally doesn't die since it's just uh, a 6-6 six -six with a minus one counter that got dealt for damage. Thought distortion for free. I guess we can check out their hand. See what they were working with. A War of Invention could have been pretty good. So our opponents can chump, we can finish off Padim if they do, but opponent's just gonna take it. Alright, sweet. Okay, we're on the play, facing Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, a life gain deck. Our hand would have been great if we could play turn one halfling. As is, I think it's still keepable. Can play Mindstone into Harrow and then play Halfling. Just not quite as explosive. Otherwise we could have gone Halfling, turn 2 Harrow plus Mindstone. Okay, this is still pretty good. So, cast Harrow. 
Sanka Forest gets Forest Mountain, which will be untapped. And then I can still play Halfling and into the north. Get a forest. So I can play Xenagos and then, yeah, we're very close to just playing our Balefire Dragon. In the meantime, our opponents got three lanes. Takes out our Halfling. Okay, Crasher's not bad. I think we still play Xenagos first so we can attack with a Crasher right away. Doesn't expose it to sorcery speed removal. Shieldred, not bad, but manageable. Especially with a Balefire Dragon. Yeah, that seems good enough here. Get the opponent for 12, wipe their board. And then next turn we could deploy the rest of our hand. Opponent reading Xenagos, trying to figure out what just happened. If they cannot deal with the Balefire, it's just gonna keep on destroying all their creatures over and over. But we've got a decent backup plan. So it's gonna be March pitching a card, so it's still a two for one. And then now play Crasher, leaving some green mana untapped. And get in for 12, make a huge token, and we can still play Galta. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand could use a bit more acceleration. Just a one Elvish Mystic, can't even play it turn one. Let's take our free Mulgan, this is better. So Halfling into Mindstone. Opponent on a Mardu deck here. So yeah, would not mind drawing another five or six mana creature to ramp into. So uh, we can enable Galta. Captain makes our draw steps more expensive, but still down to play a Karyotid here. And Guardian of New Benalia is next. Take four. And we could play Xenagos. Itali costs one more, but can try it next turn. And a hasty Itali is pretty fun. So just need our creatures to survive. Guardian and Captain attack, opponent can enlist to scry. So they can hit their land drop for next turn. Three color aggro decks can be tricky to pull off in Brawl when you need your lands to be untapped early. It's gonna be an Acolyte next. One of the early digital only cards. Okay, let's go for a tally. Should survive here. And who doesn't love free cards? So a General Kudro and a land. Boon falls to 13 and Hasty Galta could be in our future. And Judith is next, bumping the team. Six, seven, eight. Not quite lethal. And Kudro is fine to trade here. Opponent on lists. So don't really want to block and lose carry to it, so let's just take it. We're at two. And time for Galta. And that should do it. Enable Xenagos. Galta gains haste. And that does it. Awesome. On to the next one.
Okay, we're on the draw, facing Slimefoot and Squee, which is going to try and reanimate some creatures here. We've got a Keeper. Florahedron may not survive. And we kind of need it to ramp out Vastwood Surge. Opponent plays a turn one Halfling. Alright, now I think... Let's see, do we play a Tap Florahedron? So now I'm mainly worried about a discard spell, taking away my only 2-drop if I play Florahedron as a land. But... Um, now I think it's worth it, since it doesn't expose it to removal. And that way we guarantee up to 5 mana, assuming Signet survives. Opponent could play a turn 2, Slimefoot and Squee. And they will. So we're pretty far behind already. But uh, can play a Surge next turn, followed by maybe Vorinclex. And try to ramp out a Entwined Tooth and Nail, that can certainly catch us back up. Prospector can sack a Goblin to add red, so... I guess they can sack Slimefoot and Squee to put it in the graveyard, and then they can try to reanimate something. Although they still need a discard outlet to put something powerful in the graveyard. But they're also just beating us down and making additional 1-1s. One so we'll see. Deadly Dispute, that's a good one. Sack a Sapperling. And assemble the team to presumably find a discard outlet or something expensive. So yeah, opponent's deck is going off. We're just gonna play a Vastwood Surge. Get a couple mountains. Okay, Lotus Cobra's an interesting twist. Still won't be able to Cobra plus Surge since uh, Passage comes into play tapped. So we'll save that for next turn, I think. But then Cobra is essentially free. So Mountain times two. What can the opponent come up with? Just an attack with Slimefoot and the one ones. So they need to get this in the graveyard to really be able to reanimate stuff. But they haven't been able to put anything in graveyard yet either. Prospector is a way of sacking it. So they've got six mana. Put on sacks Prospector. So I guess they can bring back Slimefoot alongside Prospector now. Nope, or cast the Primeval Titan. That's a bit more impressive. Okay, so not a bad turn four. We just have to hope that uh, we get to keep our Lotus Cobra and an Entwined Tooth and Nail could still go over the top. So next turn, let's say we go Cobra, Passage, make two mana, so then we've got seven mana total, so Enough for Tooth and Nail without Entwine. Although I might want to get Xenagos in play. So we don't have to necessarily fetch with the Fabled Passage. Can just leave it in play to make an extra mana on the following turn. Opponent got a Lotus Field. And Proving Ground. Anything else? A Ragavan for one mana. Okay. So, let's see. Does Domri change anything? I don't think so. Play Cobra. Now I could also just play Vorinclex, which can block Primeval Titan, but not before they get another attack. And then they can reanimate Titan with Slimefoot. So it's not really going to help me all that much. So maybe I do just go for Xenagos and then hope to just win the game with an Entwined Tooth and Nail next turn. Which seems more realistic. All right, pass it back. Titan and Ragavan attack. So I still need a land next turn if I want to entwine Tooth and Nails, as if I fetch right now, we're still only at eight mana total, which is one short. 
Just gonna take the hit from Ragavan, can't afford to lose Cobra. And hope our opponent doesn't have any interaction. Opponent found Thorn Mammoth. Well, that can certainly interact with my Lotus Cobra. Opponent plays a Garruk Relentless instead. That can also fight Lotus Cobra and transform. So that's too bad. So Cobra down, Garruk transforms and can now tutor up any creature with the uh, minus one. So one gets to Entwine Tooth and Nail, can still cast it, put Vorinclex and Gergroth in play, I guess. But we seem to be pretty far behind now. Slimefoot brings back Prospector, sure. Take my turn. Find a Halfling. Okay, let's fetch. Vorin Clanks and Gergroth. And then with the Forest I Search I can still play Halfling, which enables Xenagos to turn into a creature. And then Xenagos triggers, targets probably Gergroth here, so we can take out Garruk. And I'll leave Xenagos on defense, even though they can easily remove one of my blockers and then we lose the Devotion. But otherwise they can just jump with a Sapperling, so it doesn't accomplish much. And then I could draw a card, since my hand's not that great. Or we could make a beast as an additional blocker. We're at 8. Opponent can animate Den next turn, so we are taking quite the beating if they can remove a blocker. So maybe I should make a beast. So at least we dealt with Garrick. And we'll see if her opponent can kill us here, but uh, they certainly have a lot of mana to work with. Prospector can sack Squee, so that's two more mana. Halfling taps for one. But yeah, getting to... Trigger Primeval Titan more than once is usually game over. So I can block Titan with Xenagos, but our opponent's just going to be able to sack Slimefoot and Squee to Prospector and then bring it back. So it's potentially helping the opponent by triggering Titan a second time this turn. But also don't want to take 6, so I'll oblige. I guess if they now remove my Devotion, they still trample for 6, since this is no longer a blocker. So, Titan down. Yeah, I guess we're not dead yet. Annihilating Glare they might have wanted to cast before attacking. So can no longer transform Vorinclex, which could have been pretty fun. Bone's gonna bring back Titan which we can fight once we play Domri. So there's Titan. Any other fun lands they can search up. Just some dual lands. Okay. Anything else? Slimefoot the Stowaway. Also works well with Sapperlings. And a Conviction to draw. Okay, at least they're mostly tapped out here. Gotta hope for a good top deck. Our opponent's at 21, so still a long way to go. Ooh, uh, Doors of Durin. That could be fun. So, play Domri. I assume we fight Primeval Titan with Xenagos here. And then we can still play the Doors of Durin. Titan 
Titan's only gone temporarily. And then targets Gergroth. Does anyone else want to attack? Probably not. We are at six after all. And then, let's see here. I guess we want to scry to and then potentially draw with Gergroth afterwards. And then Gergroth could also gain three life or make another beast. That's probably better. And do we find anything exciting with the doors? Morog? Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Kind of regretting not uh, drawing with Gergroth, so we could have drawn a land, although I think I already played one. So Morog's in play. Opponent can easily trump it and take 15 of Gergroth. But the next turn with Enclave, we get to potentially take an extra attack step. I'm glad we got to see the Doors of Durin in action. It's a pretty fun card. So both at six. Slimefoot can potentially drain us to death if they sack enough sapperlings. But uh, they don't have a free sack outlet outside of Prospector, which only works for goblins. Slimefoot goes after Domri. Opponent can sack it to Prospector anyways, so may as well just block with Xenagos. Or actually block with Gergroth to trigger it. So I can draw a card. So our opponent can bring back Primeval Titan. But that's okay. We're at five. Slimefoot triggers and Primeval Titan triggers. It does say up to one other target creature, so they could just bring back Slimefoot and Squee by itself. But uh, I don't think that's enough to kill us. So they'll need something else. Titan of Industry is pretty good. Can destroy my Doors of Durin. Opponent's at 12. So the game continues. It's been pretty interesting so far. So next turn our opponent could try to double block with both Titans on Gergroth. Which would be enough for a trade. Now a Tender Shoot Ride as well. Can also make Sapperlings, so good with both slime feet. Ooh, Terror of the Peaks. That can fly over, although there is a Titan with Reach. So it's not quite good enough. I can target Gergroth at first, put in my double block with the two Titans. Then we play a land, get an extra attack step from Morag, and take it from there. And then Gergroth can draw here. Ooh, Rishkar's expertise, okay. So I'm hoping they don't trade for Gergroth, but they probably will. Triple block. So yeah, I guess we'll kill the two Titans. Second main, play Enclave. Triggers Morog, and let's Expertise. Could Expertise second main after triggering Xenagos. Although we might put something relevant in play. Although I guess if we just double Terror of the Peaks, it's game over, so might as well see what we draw. And uh, Crasher's not bad here. Target the opponents. And just a mana short of uh, playing a Galta to just end it. But uh, target Terror. And that's 12 in the air with flying. Oof, what a close game here. Opponents casts or got back Primeval Titan five or six times. But uh, we managed to survive and eventually get there with a timely Doors of Durin for Morag into Rishkar's Expertise and of course Terror of the Peaks, a nice way to close out the game. So yeah, this Red Green Zena Ghost deck is pretty straightforward. Play a couple ramp spells, play your commander, play some beefy creatures and 
hope for the best and more often than not it seems to work out for me so i can definitely recommend the deck both for fast daily wins as well as just having a good time so that'll do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day i also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd